what would be one piece of advice that you can give our viewers today? Well, welcome back to another episode of the Bamford & Co. podcast. Today, I have a good friend over the years that we've got to be friends and also a home inspector, the owner of Pillar to Post, Brad George. Um, just wanted to bring you on here and want to give you, uh, if you can give you a little introduction into your business, how long you've been doing it, just give us a little background about who you are. Sure, yeah. Like Ryan said, Brad George, Pillar to Post Home Inspectors. I've uh, been doing it since 2010. Uh, we provide home inspection and additional testing services throughout Saskatoon and area. Uh, Humboldt, soon to be Prince Albert, Rosetown, all the way down to Davidson now. Wow, you're just expanding very quickly. I didn't know that. I don't well, sell things out there so right? as much, right? So hey, up north, a couple cabins here and there. there you go. We'll have you covered. Perfect. That sounds good. So many of our viewers, you know, just to maybe give a little bit of a background here is many of our viewers maybe haven't had a home inspection done or maybe haven't had one for decades. You know, can right. you kind of lead us through, you know, what isn't, uh, what a full home inspection entails today? Well, it entails a lot of things. It's literally from the roof to the foundation and everything in between. We're looking at electrical, we're going in attics, we're going on roofs, uh, mechanical and testing everything in between getting the moisture meters out nowadays if you haven't had an inspection for a while infrared camera very good for electrical and hidden moisture issues um, and then everything's online now so home inspection reports are interactive now uh, 360 walkthroughs through them and it's like a living document now yeah. not just a paper binder anymore <laughs> it's changed since my last printout of a, of a home inspection that I had from you guys yeah yeah 100 <laughs> percent. that's good so you know I know that you know I walk through a ton of homes I see the benefit of a home inspection um, why is it so important and maybe you can give us maybe a couple examples of the things that you found over the years like you know I think that would be a, a really good Point for people to hear, you know, just explain why it's so important with some examples. Right. Uh, a home inspector is trained in multiple disciplines, so um, got to keep in mind that it's a visual, non-invasive inspection. We're the guest of the seller in the house, essentially, right. but we are trained to pick up on visual clues that will um, sort of tell us, you know, what's going on in places. Um, you know, for instance, not a lot of people when they're looking at the house are looking at the foundation right when they walk up to the house. They're looking at the windows, they're looking at the shingles, and oftentimes the foundation is completely not looked at. That offer comes in uh, just the other day. Uh, I had to unfortunately tell the new first-time buyers that your foundation has all the signs that it's moved, cracked, signs of moisture intrusion, you know, sometimes the bear of bad news, but, you right. know, save them a significant sum of money rather than moving into that <laughs> house, you know? Well, for sure. Is it, I've learned a ton over dealing with you and Al over the years. Um, you know, I, I like to think that we don't get as many inspections that fail anymore because we've learned enough from you right, guys yeah, over the years. Your eyes train uh, now too, uh, yeah. I'm learning it's slowly but surely. Um, now, you know, obviously those are some great things. What what kind of requirements would like a regular home, owner, home buyer be looking for? Like, I'm sure that there's a ton of different types of inspectors. Is right. there any specific um, things that are absolute must for, you know, specifications that you're looking for in a home inspector? Well, there, there is for me, and I'm slightly biased because I'm part of the association as well. Okay. It's the Canadian Association of Home and Property Inspectors. We call it CAPI for short. They're the only um, certification provider that uh, uh, looks at your e and insurance. Uh, they provide the training. It's a proctored exam as well, rather than open book online exam. Okay. So an actual traditional test. Uh, where you have an evaluator watching you, uh, and it's closed, not okay. open book on purpose. How many, would you say that majority of home inspectors in the city would have that, what is it, CAD? Is CABI. CABI? Yeah. Okay. Is it, would they, would most of them have that, or, or would you, 
would you be a little bit different in that regard? Uh, we're a bit different in okay. that way. Uh, everyone on my team at Pillar to Post mm -hmm. is Cappy. Okay. Uh, and then there's only, I believe off the top of my head, maybe two or three mo more in the Saskatoon area okay. that, are, that are Cappy inspectors. So these other people could be open book testers. That is 100% <laughs> okay. correct. That's fair. Okay. Yeah. No, that's a very good thing because I didn't really know know that as well too you know like at the end of the day so yeah. i obviously picked somebody good that i didn't have to worry about in the past right yeah, um thanks. so one thing is that i've found is that you know obviously you go through you do a full inspection on the property um and then we meet you at the end of the inspection right yeah. um i find it very helpful for for us to do that walk through you know like is that is that typical that you do that with with every person if they're in town to be able to do that hundred percent. Yeah. That's part of the service that we're providing. Um, it's good. Well, for me as a visual learner myself, I, I want the client to know where this is, what the solution is, what the problem is right. and seeing it firsthand can really put that together for people. And it really can differentiate, uh, as well, the, the big problem, versus the small problem, right? Right. We need a, we need a $500 fix here. It's not a $5,000 fix right. and the reverse too, where they can really see it, feel it, touch it that, oh yes, this is a big problem. We need to look at this further yeah. and take some action on it. Well, I know from my experience is that having that conversation with the clients yourself, um, it puts the clients a little bit more at ease rather than just reading something on the paper saying, Hey, here's an issue. Yeah. Take a look at it. You know, what's the solution? I think that yeah. we've been able to talk those out a lot of times and be able to just educate the client and say, you know, this is something that's mandatory that needs to be fixed today, or yeah. this is something that's a progressive issue. Right? Right. Unfortunately, yeah. just almost like every industry, uh, home inspection report needs to be written a certain way, I understand. right? There's, yeah. you know, three or four parts to a comment. Um, and it has to be written that way. That's the requirement, right? You know, when you get that walkthrough at the end, you can show them firsthand and they can remember the conversation when mm -hmm. they're reading the reports so they can differentiate those big problems versus the small ones. For sure. And we always suggest to our clients and our homeowners as well, is that keep the inspection review it because it's a good, you know, mm -hmm. it's a good checklist for people to be able to go through. Um, there's a lot of moving parts when buying and selling property and yeah. sometimes those small things get forgotten right so it's a good place to to go back and For use sure. the resource 100 percent. yeah and new today too uh as of next week oh. it's all going to be available online fully digital searchable as well now oh. uh and uh, everyone will have their own portal where it houses everything oh wow Wow, you just technology just moving on up very quickly hey eh? yeah i like it yep. that leads me into the next part of the things is that you know I remember when I started real estate is that there was, you know, there was a big difference on the technology side of things on, on what you were using for equipment, mm -hmm. right? How, how has that changed? What are the, some of the new things? Like you did mention, you know, moisture meters and thermal, you know, thermals yeah. have been a big one that I always suggest to people just because we can read a little bit behind the, you know, a little be, bit be, behind between the, the lines, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. What other things are, is, is that kind of the new stuff or is it there are other things that were, that are new on the technology side of things? Well, as, as we're progressing, like we started with moisture meters, that was the limit of technology at the right. time when industry... It's when I started. Right, yeah, so right, right there, like yeah. Even, you know, back in the early 2000s, the yeah. moisture meter was at infrared cameras were still too expensive for mm -hmm. people to buy. Now the prices of that has come down. Infrared, still a great tool for um, moisture and electrical issues. Uh, now we've progressed, well, a pillar to post, um, 360 home inspection. Right. So the reports integrated into a 360 view, which really lets people visualize the inspection. So they uh, could, so just so the viewer could understand is that yeah. they would be able to kind of just like a virtual tour, is it be able to, um, to pinpoint those locations and then there'd be notes on, That's on right. those specific areas in that, in that room maybe. Yeah. Okay. Of concern right, right there, okay. ready to go. Okay. Uh, and not really pertaining to inspection itself, uh, our, the same technology can provide floor plans now so they can better prepare for, you know, renovations, furniture placement. They could send a contractor for quotes. Uh, you know, it saves them time, uh, contractors time uh, right. for all that sort of stuff. And I guess some of the new stuff coming out too 
is that it's only for the added testing, right? So okay. now uh, asbestos testing is getting a lot quicker, mold testing, you know, sometimes it could come back same day now. Uh, right. And there's a couple other things on the horizon too, but... And that hasn't been the case. That was always something that if we had an issue, is it something we were extending conditions or, or dealing with those kind of things. So all those things play a factor from my perspective, you know, as being For the realtor. Sure. It helps order. everyone get to closing faster right. is what it is, you know, you guys and the buyers yeah. as well, sellers at the same time too, right. that they're not waiting yeah. Anything so we can go on and make an educated decision with the information that's that's provided already. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So we're all looking for. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, over you know, it, it's it's late fall at yep. this time. It you know, is. I know that there is a couple things that I've done around the house to prepare for the winter. Okay. Can you give us, uh, you know, maybe some some tips or some things that must be done? Um, you know, obviously it might be a little late for some people to do it, but there's it still is, time. It's, it's pretty cold out there right, right now. It's a cold day, not used to it yet. Should have done sprinklers already, right. 100%. You might have some cracked heads already if you don't. Mm -hmm. uh, second to that is just turning off the water to those outside taps, drain them out, making right. sure you're good to go. Another thing is while we still have good weather is check the grading around the house. Right. If you've got any low spots that might see a lot of snow melt in the spring, now is the time to protect your foundation for the, for the spring. You know, get a little bit of dirt in, make sure it's sloping away from the house. Uh, that way when that big melt happens, it's not all concentrated at the foundation. And second to that, the next best thing you could do, especially if you live in an older home without any weeping tile, is getting that snow away from the house uh, a good at least six feet. You know, blow it into the backyard, blow it into the front yard. Don't let it melt right at your foundation. And then, I mean, leaves are still falling, but if you can, get those leaves out of the gutters and leave those downspouts nice and far away yeah. as soon as you can. I agree. Those are those are all the things that I did for the house yeah, this year. So, that, the test so I'm doing well. I practice what I preach, <laughs> I guess. Eh? Um, you know, the big thing for me is that I also I live in a 1960s home. You know, and right. and for me is that I always snow blow around the house and and make sure that the the water is leading away. And I know that that's you know depending on the era of home. When we're looking at 1960s, they wouldn't have weeping tile into the 70s, 80s. You would have some weeping tile that would probably go back into the drain. And then nowadays with some of the new houses, you're going to have some sump pumps and that kind of stuff. But yep. it is good practice to to be to do the preparation. <laughs> For it sure. goes a long way. That's a good one too. Make yeah. sure that sump pump's working right now. Right. Make sure it's not blocked right now. Make sure it could drain itself out so it doesn't freeze mm -hmm. over winter now yep. and then test that sump again uh, right before the big melt happens in spring okay. your house is relying on that sump for sure I guess the other thing is that maybe throughout the winter is it looking at uh, just with all the high efficiency event vents and exhaust is it making sure that all the snow and and ice has been knocked off there so we're having proper yeah, super air common issue. The house. Yeah. yeah super common issue those high efficient furnaces, the intake and the exhaust can freeze up. Right. That'd be almost your number one thing to look at if your furnace wasn't turning on one day. Okay. That and then go to the filter to see if it's dirty. Right. As Maybe well. change that too. Hey? Maybe change that. At least every <laughs> three months, you would hope. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, I guess that's not a fall thing. That's why we didn't bring it up, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's an ongoing thing. <laughs> that's good. So, um, if you were looking at, you know, first time home buyer out there, is it what's one piece of advice you do? Maybe it's the type of inspection that you do. Um, what would be one piece of advice that you can give our viewers today? Well, it might come in a couple pieces. Okay. Uh, attend the walkthrough. That's probably the most yeah. valuable information you're going to get from the home inspection. You're also, uh, with us anyway, you're going to get uh, on the fly maintenance tips, uh, how things operate. Um, and then uh, just ask questions as right. you go. Don't be scared to ask those Don't questions. Don't be scared eh? to ask. Yeah, okay. we're always there. We're a resource. We're available, like you know, after right. you know, post inspection too. If anyone has a quick question or you know they don't have a tradesperson or something they can always call us and we can point them in the right direction of course so brad if, if somebody wanted to get a hold of you how would they do so uh, they do so on our website pillar-post-saskatoon.com okay. okay or our office 306 nine five six six seven six zero perfect well and we'll include those details in the um i guess in the description part at the bottom um so basically we've covered everything from what is a home inspection to maintenance tips for, for the fall here. 
Um, also talking about technology. This has been a great podcast here, Brad. Thanks for coming on. Um, I'm happy to have you, have you over and do it again. Thanks. Anytime. Yeah. Perfect.